I love a game with some player choice. Mass Effect, The Witcher, Divinity, you name it. If I have any say in the outcome of the story, I'm in. However, over the many, many years, I've noticed that a similar pattern runs through all the characters I play. I'm always the good guy. I'm willing to push the boundaries a little bit if I think it's worth it in the long run, but I rarely go beyond that. That's how I played Studio Zam's masterpiece, Disco Elysium, back in 2019. Sure, my detective had a <clears throat> messy past, but I wanted the best for him, to right his wrongs and turn over a new leaf. So I ended up playing a straight edge cop hellbent on solving the case and helping as many people as possible. When the credits rolled, I felt I had redeemed my washed up detective. It was great. But I knew there was another side of this game beckoning me, sweetly calling my name and welcoming me into its warm embrace, telling me things like lick that liquor off the table, punch this stupid kid square in the jaw for the hell of it, and take every single sleazy bribe brandish before me. With the release of Disco Elysium Final Cut, I decided to do exactly that. I set all my attributes to one and set out on the saddest, most pathetic adventure of my detective's lifetime, or at least the most pathetic adventure he could remember. Disco Elysium is unlike anything I've ever played. It's an ambitious RPG that asks you to solve a case to the best of your ability. Throughout your 30 hour adventure, you'll spend a lot of time talking to folks, following up on leads, rolling virtual dice, and probably recycling bottles. Describing it to someone makes it sound like an elaborate, long-winded joke or a pretentious art house game. And as someone who absolutely adores this game, I'd be the first to admit that it's very much both these things. Except both of these things are smashed together in a way that just works. For every twisted locker room style joke, it masterfully prods at the inner workings of the human condition in a profound and unique way. It also lets you do every drug under the sun and become a superstar cop, which is rad as hell. Not the drugs part, the superstar part. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, f off and die, in a cool voice. So when I fired up Disco Elysium The Final Cut, I was curious to see how much of that experience translated to an absolute f up of a character. Turns out it's all still there. It's just funnier and like 10 times more shocking. Seriously, some things I don't even want to show in this video. I think I died three times before I even left the hostel you start in. I reached for my tie hanging on the ceiling fan and died. I looked at my reflection in the mirror and died. I tried to run out the door without paying and you guessed it, I died. When you only have one endurance and one morale point, every conversation is a matter of life or death. Begging for money can even get you killed if you aren't careful. The real kicker here is that when you set all your stats to one, you are unsurprisingly bad at everything. This means that the odds are stacked against you for nearly every single roll check. On one hand, this means you die a lot, but on the other hand, it means you typically see the worst possible outcome of most checks. This felt wrong, wrong like touching your sister's breast. For instance, when I tried to run away from the manager at the hostel, if you fail, you trip and injure yourself. If you only have one point in endurance, you just straight up die. Sure, this can be frustrating, but I also think it's funny as hell that my story in this particular instance ended so unceremoniously and abruptly. When I reloaded my save, I decided instead I was going to arrest the manager for being a prick and he just verbally eviscerated me for my terrible judgment. Oh, so apparently I'm a bitch now. Okay, I'll be the bitch and you'll be the broke cop who owes me money and no one will arrest anyone because that's insane. How's that? My antics as a colossal f up spread like wildfire once I slithered out of the hostel. I tried to examine the body out back, but every time I'd get close to it, I'd vomit. Finally, I picked up some ammonia, which helps mask the scent of a rotting corpse, but it didn't help enough and I threw up again. I literally spent my entire day chasing other leads because I couldn't do basic police work. I even tried to give up on being a cop, but Kim, God bless his soul, wouldn't let me give up on myself that easily. Get a hold of yourself. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. 
you are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. My abhorrent behavior extended far beyond a bit of vomit and general buffoonery. One of the few checks I actually succeeded without save scumming was punching Kuno in his stupid face. I was absolutely shocked when I passed that check and knocked him flat on his ass. If you've never played Disco Elysium, A, play Disco Elysium, and B, the footage of a grown man punching a kid may be a little off-putting, but I can assure you Kuno is more demon than child. Until, you know, this game does what it does best and shows you that Kuno is a victim and product of the crumbling infrastructure and deep-rooted corruption that has seeped into his family life. It's heavy, incredibly well-written stuff. But anyway, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. The hardest thing about playing this way, though, is letting your partner Kim Kutsuragi down every step of the way. If you play Disco Elysium Straight Edge, then you know he's your rock. He's patient, reserved, understanding, and dedicated. He knows the world is a messy place, but it's clear he's trying to make it just a little bit better. When you play as a cruel, insensitive moron, he's constantly giving you the benefit of the doubt early on. Every time I'd do something despicable, my gut reaction was, Aw oh man, I hope Kim takes this alright. Kim's response to your shenanigans feels even weightier when you play without any skills because there aren't many thoughts in your character's head. Normally, whichever stat you invest in will manifest as a personality in your head. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para detective. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. If you don't invest in any stats, that grey matter between your character's ears starts to feel pretty empty. Your detective has little intuition, he's incapable of thinking logically, he has zero sympathy, and so on. In a strange way, Disco Elysium made me think about stupidity in a very different way. Any other good news? He's saying he lost his badge. You what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick f***ing Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. In order to win the corrupt cop bingo game I was playing, I also took every single bribe I could. It didn't matter who it was, who saw, or how much it was. I dipped my finger in everyone's wallet. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. I rationalized it by becoming a communist hobo superstar cop though, so, you know, I think I get points for that. The wealth distribution is unfair, I had no money, and I was famous, so I deserve that money, right? The best part is that I didn't even pay for the damages to the hostel I caused the night before. Instead, I bought very expensive sneakers, a boombox, and big useless speakers. I found the boombox particularly useful for this playstyle because when I equipped it, everyone could hear me thumping mad beats. It's kind of like when you roll down the windows and blast the music in your car because you are so desperate for attention that you'll take any kind of attention at this point, even if it means you being an absolute nuisance. I'm definitely not talking about myself here. Anyway, I didn't only spend my money on useless things. I also bought a lot of drugs. Over-the-counter drugs, under-the-counter drugs. It turns out in this video game, drugs can actually improve your stats for a brief amount of time, but they usually come at a cost. As you can probably guess, when you play a character with absolutely no skill whatsoever, that kind of thing comes in handy. So I indulged. You suck a manly dose of the extreme chemical smelling liquid into your mouth. There, it seeps into your tongue. When you swallow, it's already almost all gone. However, because I only had one health and one morale point to work with, I had to keep some medicine on hand to quell any cardiac arrest or mental breakdowns. Believe me when I say there were many. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. Despite being an untethered ass of a man, I did genuinely try to solve the case. I spoke to everyone, followed up every lead, and did eventually examine the body when the game gave me a bonus to my endurance because I had been waiting long enough, which to be honest was a bit humiliating. Nevertheless, the case still moved forward in the messiest possible way. No matter how badly I f***ed up, I could still pull myself together and tug on another thread. 
chase down another lead, or share a smoke with Kim on the balcony in the stillness of the night. And if that ain't a metaphor for life, I don't know what is. Sure, you can die in Disco Elysium, but like some of the greatest RPGs, you can't really fail. If something doesn't work, you can try something else. And if that doesn't work, you can try something else. And if that doesn't work, you guessed it, you can just kind of try something else. And if all else fails, you can just save scum your way through checks, which doesn't really relate to this life in any particular way, at least not in any way I can make sense of it. Anyway, I guess my point is, is that you should play Disco Elysium and you shouldn't let life get you down. Like my my absolute tornado of a detective, sometimes we take the strangest paths to get where we need to be, but that's the beauty of it. Hell, if you don't want to solve a murder case, maybe your true calling is to become a disco superstar or overthrow the establishment through philosophical conversations about workers' rights with a potty-mouthed red-headed kid. And if that ain't a metaphor for Twitter, I don't know what is. Also, unlike my ass clown of a detective, don't do drugs, be polite in the comments, and subscribe to GameSpot.